Right, hello, welcome back to another video. So this week is going to be a, a quick follow-up uh, from what we discussed last time, uh, fixing TAA or TSR smearing. Uh, last week we had a look at some particles, uh, lots of little dots that are leaving little trails behind and smearing because they are uh, not writing to depth and velocity by default. Uh, and we can go into the material settings and turn that on. <coughs> Obviously watch that video if you want to know more about that. Um, but this raised an interesting question, one in the, the comments below. Um, what happens when we have uh, material smearing? And so here we have a simple animated material. It's just a panning uh, kind of lightning crack texture. Um, and you can see here on the left that it's ca causing really, really bad smearing. Um, you can see that kind of stuttering. And this is about as, as worst case as it be. It's a very bright white emissive uh, on a very dark background. And so there's really, really, really high contrast. Um, but you can see it's really not giving us a very good result. Uh, and then one here on the right where I've changed some settings, uh, changed the setup and managed to not completely eliminate it, uh, but to reduce it a lot. So um, basically we're gonna do the same thing, but in reverse. So with the particles, they weren't writing to output um, velocity and, and depth. Um, and by turning that on, we are able to, to sort of create a better result for the sort of TSR smearing. Um, for the temple super sampling, up sampling. Um, and here we've kind of got the other problem. So we've got movement within the pixels because of the animated shader, but we're also writing to depth and velocity, but the depth and velocity doesn't have that movement in it. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to make a, um, a version of this material that doesn't write to depth and velocity. And the way we do that is by changing to a translucent or additive shader. Um, so if we have a look here, if I just make that into translucent, uh, it's going to fix a lot of our smearing issues because it's now no longer writing to depth and um, and velocity. Um, and because of that, it's now not being included. So it's kind of the same sort of fix as we did last time, but now in reverse. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice that because we're now using a translucent material, we've lost our nice PBR results. So we've lost our, our, our shading here. Um, we could go in and adjust our translucent blend mode. If I go down here, we could put this up to say surface translucency volume uh, and then have access to that. But it's quite an expensive shader to do that. So um, better way of doing this rather than using a really expensive translucent shader is we can use an overlay material. So uh, if I just put this back to what it was before, mm -mm, fake. Um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to split the material into two. Uh, and that's what we have here on this sphere. So the base material is just a black layer, nothing complex here whatsoever. Just a parameter that I forgot to name. So just pure black, but it's still using an opaque renderer. So it's still getting all the full PBR elements to it. Um, and then the overlay, um, overlay, same material as before, this time just set to additive. So this is not writing to depth and velocity. Um, Again, has it named? Oh, terrible namings. Always name your parameters, even in quick examples. But there we go. Fix my OCD. Um, so what is it doing? Well, it's applied as an overlay material in this sphere. So if I select this and I type in overlay, overlay, overlay material. So in the rendering settings, um, this is a relatively new feature. Basically, we used to have to duplicate the model and have two models completely on top of each other. And then you'd render sort of the opaque material on one and the, and the overlay material on the other. Um, and then Epic said, well, that's a not very good setup. Let's just have a slot for an overlay material. And what it will do is it will render the mesh twice. And so this sphere mesh here is rendered once with an opaque material, once with a translucent material. And the translucent material is the animated one. And that, because it's not writing to depth and velocity, is then not smearing um, at least as far as I understand this setup. So um, it does require a little bit more uh, kind of like planning when you're making this kind of thing. You can't just check in um, an animated part of a material to any material that you've got. You need to kind of keep that separate. Um, but in terms of workflow, um, it's not a huge change and it does make quite a big difference in terms of the visual end result that you get between the two. So. Um, do check that out. As I say, it's not 100% perfect. There definitely is a little bit of smearing still in here. So if anyone has any uh, other tips and tricks to fix this kind of thing that works even better, do let me know. Um, but 
for now, I think that is a pretty good result considering. Um, and if we just have a look at the uh, shader complexity count, um, there is very small difference between the two. If I just move these over so it's, whoops, that way. So I can go like one to other. You can see there's a very slight difference in cost, but we're not talking huge costs. We're not up here in the, the pinks, reds, and whites. Um, very fractional additional cost there to fix that for quite a big visual upgrade. So do check that out and try that out in your own projects. Okay, as always, big thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel. Um, yeah, couldn't do this without you. Um, also, if you do want to learn more about materials and Unreal and Niagara, all of that kind of stuff, especially on the techie end of things, um, do check out my longer form courses as well. So available on Gumroad and Udemy. I've got four materials courses and one Niagara, fifth Niagara, or the next Niagara courses in the works as we speak, doing some advanced Niagara stuff. So uh, do check that out. Um, and yeah, any questions, comments, do let me know. Uh, and I'll see you all next time.